Hey guys, RC here. Welcome back to another episode of Football Manager 21. This is our DeGroff Shop save. Let's jump into the highlights. We start off with a throw in from Nemeth, crossed in, and Peter DeVries. <laughs> Paul DeVries. I actually worked with a guy named Peter DeVries. Uh, he gets the header. Another set piece, and it goes to the back post where Nateb, the center back, slots it home. And then Strudel Slob puts in a penalty to make it 3-0 in the first half. Chris Natumbo was injured in the 10th minute, but you can see we dominated this game. 16 shots to 9, 52% possession. Taking a look back at the previous games, we had the season opener with PSV, and you might be going, geez, RC, you played an awful lot of games. Yes, I did, uh, and there's a reason for that, uh, because I had our episode recorded and decided it was not in my best interest to put that out. So <laughs> we'll leave it at that. Uh, if you're interested in kind of what happened, I won't go into full detail, but uh, I did have a little bit of a vent uh, in my journeyman save, and I'll do a little bit of a ramble right at the end of this episode just you know, to let you know what has happened why I was delayed last week uh, in putting these episodes out, basically because I didn't record them. But anyway, we had jumped ahead, and I had actually done a recording, and we were coming back down in here. And uh, yeah, so I just decided uh, not, to, not to put that out. Uh, so, you know, fresh, you know, big deep breath, clear the system reset settle down but i'm going to let you guys if you're if you're interested pause it i'm not going to go through that many games you can see the goal scores there uh but not we're not doing horribly we've gotten into some positive form recently taking a look at the competitions we are currently in seventh and remember our goal is to finish in the relegation playoff so not too bad being that we are seven points clear of that right now doing okay jumping into our squad we can look at our goal scores uh chris natumba six goals uh he did get injured as i mentioned he's out for three to four months with a broken foot and that happened in our last match the three nil win over fc20 that we just saw the highlights on uh shed a hull five goals, Diallo four goals, and DeVries three goals, as well as Stradoslav. Uh What we've had is we've had an influx of players coming in recently, uh, very unhappy. Uh, seven players with no real opinion, including Kwesi, which is troubling. Stradoslav, Banachek, Nemeth, Slotboom, Reniers, Van Zest. Uh, 22 players that support me. And if we take a look at happiness, well, I think there's a better place to find that. Or maybe not. Anyway, uh, let me go ahead and get to today's match. It is a couple of weeks distant. And I guess before we do that, let's see. PSV was the last match. That was in August. So let's see if we have any transfers to catch you guys up on. And the answer would be yes. All right, so let's uh, two incoming and a bunch of outgoing. Uh, Attila Pater, these are all loans except for the last two, so those don't really matter. Uh, Hassan Ince didn't really particularly want to get rid of him, but Hellman came in with a pretty good offer. And if we take a look, he was you know he hadn't played for us yet. You know, everything he had played was non-competitive. And I said, yeah, you know what? We can afford to get rid of him. And my scouts think he's a, only a 29. So he's not, he's got some decent rating, solid finishing, but he was never going to challenge for first team football. Uh, same thing with Burt Vanderwall, $81,000 to go off to beer shot. Uh, we paid 125000 for him. So we, you know, we do take a little financial hit, not the end of the world, but you can see this year, 17 non-competitive games. Last year, uh, 25, only two league appearances, one start, one off the bench, didn't play that great. 
And I just don't think he was ever going to do anything. 58%, but you can see right there, he's only the fifth best you know, midfielder that we've got there on the left wing. So I just didn't see any, any shot of him breaking into the club. So those are the two outgoing moves. And then uh, we brought in Alice Cervenka, uh, who you see we did turn around and loan out. He, goes, uh, he comes in from Bronby, 18 years old, so he's a little young, but very pacey, first touch, like what he brings to the table. Uh, so, you know, we paid a good number for him, but it was kind of looking to the future. And so we'll see where he fits in on that left side. Certainly an upgrade over uh, Vanderwall. And then uh, Jean Christopher Blum, a free transfer. And he's 25 years old in the goal and pretty solid goalkeeper. And he's already had a start. Uh, we just signed him right at the end of this transfer window, I believe. And I that was due to, I haven't recorded this in so long. It's been a week. Medical Center. Did, case, yes. Case got hurt. He was hurt originally in training just yesterday. But Anachik, Anachik was hurt, and he was going to be out three to five months. That was the deal. So he damaged a knee. He was going to basically miss the season. Case has been doing a good job. So, but then he got hurt, and we were really left with nobody in goal. And that was really troubling to me. And so I felt this was in our best interest to sign a new goalkeeper. Now, if we compare the two, there's not a huge difference in them. The big thing is Case is only 16 years old, and he's already as good, if not better, than Blom. But I think Blom gives us a very quality goalkeeper in the event that Case goes down, which... He did. So we needed somebody to come in. So that was kind of a panic buy, but it was like, I don't have a deputy keeper for the rest of the season. So jumped on him, got him on a free, and uh, I think he's pretty quality. And now we can definitely afford to sell Anachik if a bid comes in for him. So let's get into the match. All right, we're back for the match today. Uh, recently, while playing through the matches, get to get to this point, the last few matches, I brought this tactic back with the four, the diamond in the mid. So we're going to be going with Stretoslav and Viad up top, DeVries in the number 10, Shedahol, Quasi, Diallo in the midfield uh, triangle. Uh, let's see, they want me to bench this guy and start Marinicic. And Banachek is my better guy there. Who's the other guy that's having a meltdown on me here? Marinit, let's see. Yeah, I've gotten all, I mean, I am starting to get so many, oh, we're not playing enough games. We want to play. Marinisic is giving me crap. Stratoslav's giving me crap. See, I want Suk to play because he's been doing well. I mean, he was huge for us last season uh let's see merrick merrick's another guy giving me crap yeah you know what let's throw him in there and then when they lose i can go you guys suck and if they win well then the other guys are going to get mad because i benched them right that's just how it goes <laughs> somebody's got to play only 11 people can start that means everybody else has to ride the bench or not dress but I can definitely tell already, I'm going to have to get rid of a bunch of guys this offseason. I am giving some thought to just scrapping this save. Um, we'll talk more about that in the ramble at the end. Oh, you know what? And I have made the decision. We're going, yeah, key highlights. That's what I did. All right, Quazy looking over the top. That was a poor pass. Maybe I should bench him. A twisted knee, but he can play through it. Oh, my goodness, and that was one hell of a finish. Case gives up what appeared to be a goal he should have saved. And that's his second goal of the season. 
Oh my goodness. Looks like he may have gotten blind, you know, blind in a blind spot. Oh, that's not good. Jettahol's got a bruised ankle. But he can play through it. Allegedly. Come on, guys. So, yeah, I'm just, the team is just falling apart at the seams mentally right now. And it is driving me up the wall. Every time I turn around, I've got an email. Look at that. Wow. You know, I get an email, you know, this person wants, you know, is complaining and needs to start more games. And to credit, they, they're listed as an important player. I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to figure out who my starting people are. Eric Biad, third goal of the season for the newcomer in the strike force. And that was nice. Very good job. Figure out who, who our starters are. And if there's guys, you know, that were here last season or whatever that have fallen by the wayside, I, I'm going to change their squad status. And, you know, then if they bitch, they can, they can leave. You know, that's kind of the point that I'm at. <laughs> Just like, eh, I'm done. Talk to the hand, you know. How do you guys normally handle that when you have, uh, I mean, I, I don't recall having it as bad as I'm having it with this club. Four shots in the first half, two on target, but we've made it count. Uh, getting back even. Possession is slightly in their favor. And I am going to go that one. And that didn't seem to work. And I went back to key highlights just, you know, as we talked about, you know, a while back, we were going to try to shorten these episodes. And this is just another way I can do that. Oh, DeVries gets blocked out. Ouch. Do we have... I'm going to go to hit early crosses. Let's do that. See if we can get some balls in a little quicker. I'm not sure that's going to help a whole lot. All right. Shed a hole. Looks like he's dragging and he's nursing that foot injury. So let's pull him off. Now he's a mid left. I don't have anybody over there. A lot of defenders in here, mid right, mid center, wing back left. I'm going to bring Suk on out there. He can play on the right side, but he's left footed, so he should be able to play winger over there. So we'll bring him in. Haven't seen any highlights with Stretoslav and Nemeth. How's Merrick doing? Merrick's not playing great. You know what? But let's ride these guys as long as we can. Maybe some of them will get tired and then not be able to play the next match, right? <laughs> that's, that's wishful thinking, I'm sure. All right, there's a good header out. Oh, that was a nice-looking shot. Thank goodness. All right, we're going to demand more. Just keep an eye on everybody's fitness. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and pull Viad. Just because, oh man, Mer Marinic, Mer <laughs> a groin injury. Wants to stay on, but the injury is affecting him. Well, you're off. All right. Um, you know what? Gaik is, I'm trying to sell him. Let's put him in the shop window and Viad and Vicario. Vicario hadn't played a lot, so let's put him in. See if he can bring something to the table here. Gronigan takes a 2-0 lead over Go Ahead. Oh, there's over the top. Vicario runs onto it and hits the keeper right in the hands. Don't think that's what we should be aiming at. Maybe we chalk that off to his inexperience. A nice header by Nateb, but again, right at the keeper. Can we salvage anything here? I mean, we've got a point. Oh, he just nutmegged his player, and he dinks the keeper. Ludinho Vicario, his first goal for the club. 
What a goal, and we have picked up three points potentially. Stratoslav with a nice one touch, and then he, oh man, Rose just got nutmegged, and then the keeper got dinged. Oh, Vicario is impressing the hell out of me. It took him took him a little time. He had to get a little rust off. Oh, you know what? No, we already made three subs. I was going to pull Quazy off here. Five minutes of stoppage time. Don't give it up here at the end. And we hold on for the 2-1 victory. 11 shots, 7 on target, 2.02 XG, so we were right on target. That is excellent, excellent, excellent. And that moves us, well, potentially up into 5th position. Beyond 6 to 8 days. Marinchik, 5 to 6 days. Shedahol, 1 to 2 days. And we finish, looks like, in 6th uh, after the day. Three wins of our last five, so we're doing solid. We've come back into decent form. Couple of losses. Taking a look at our competitions. Uh, the next round of the Dutch Cup is the second round. That'll be in about two and a half weeks, three weeks. About three weeks, yeah. We're playing Hollandia. Sixth position. I'm liking how things are looking. All right, well, we'll call that an episode. I am going to do a ramble here in a minute, so if you don't want to hear that, good time to check out. Hit the like button, subscribe, and all that other stuff. Much appreciated, guys. Thank you so much. Okay, so ramble time. You know, here in the FM community, we always, all of us, talk about how tight-knit the community is, how supportive the community is, um, and for the most part, I would say that's an accurate statement. I mean, you know, I know everybody knows who Loki Doki is. I mean, he did that save last season where he raised over five thousand dollars for uh, for uh, you know for that for you know a very small club uh, stuff like that. The fact that a he would do something like that, and then b the fact that his subscribers and viewers would donate money and donate that much money. That's that that's where supportive and you know everything else. Not everybody is that supportive. And I I had a moment about a week ago where I was contemplating hiring a third party editor. And, you know, I watch Loki and Lelujo, and it wasn't any of those guys. But, you know, I watch, you know, several FM channels and Aussie Villain. It wasn't him either. Um, but, uh, you know, and they, you know, I think what they do differently from me is, A, they do it this for a living for the most part. They make money. And they've got time that they can put into, you know, the little skits and everything else. That's not my nature. I'm kind of I'm kind of blunt, you know, uh, just straight to the point. And so the creativity side isn't my strong suit. But what I was thinking is, look, I could hire an editor. One, as I've told you guys, I don't get paid for this. I don't have enough viewers, don't have enough views, don't have enough subscribers, and that's all fine. I've never done this to make money or to quit my my regular job. I like my job. I'm very good at it. And I make pretty good money. So um, that was never a goal. I've always done YouTube as a hobby because I enjoy it. And I've gotten to know some of you guys pretty well. Uh, you know, that, that we, we talk a lot in the comments and stuff. And, and that, you know, I, I get satisfaction out of that. I've always said if I could just make one person smile or or have a, a few minutes of enjoyment during a day then i have made a bigger impact in that moment than i could have not being on youtube and i think that's commendable and that's kind of my goal uh because youtube played a huge role mainly loki doki but you know youtube played a huge role in getting me through my son dealing with cancer several years ago. So I reached out to one of the big FM YouTubers 
And my question was, I didn't ask for, hey, come check my channel out. Didn't ask that. My question was, hey, I'm thinking about hiring an editor, third-party editor. As a person that uses an editor, how much do you think that influences your videos and impacts your channel? Basically, I'm looking to see if, would this be a good investment for me? Because, you know, by not making money, this would be 100% expense to me by doing it. You know, so will it help my videos take another step by doing this? And can you give me some, some tips or advice on how to find an editor, how much they cost? It was, you know, so all of my questioning was about editors and, and editing on a, on a channel. The response was not what I expected. Uh, the response was quit doing YouTube or quit doing Football Manager and find something else to do. That was, that was the uh, response that I got. Um, you know, basically an editor won't help you. Uh, you should just quit uh, or do something besides Football Manager. So uh, that, that kind of, you know, if I didn't say it hurt, you know, that, that I'd be lying, but you know, at the end of the day, I'm in sales. I get told no a thousand times for every one time I'm told yes, not that ratio, but you guys know what I'm talking about. If you can't handle getting told no, then you shouldn't be in sales. But I didn't ask for a yes or a no question. I didn't ask for an evaluation of my channel or my video quality, I asked, if I get an editor, do you think it might help? And how do I find an editor and how much does it cost? And none of those questions got answered. It was quit YouTube, or if you want to stay on YouTube, do something besides Football Manager. Now, I'm not a threat to this person. <laughs> they're, they're much huger than I will ever be and this was just this was something where i thought you know as tight-knit and supportive as our community is i could reach out to somebody that has knowledge that i don't have and get some guidance or advice on this situation and the advice and guidance was go to hell uh quit so um, took me a couple of days to kind of cope with that. I, I didn't do any recording. I sat down to record. Usually, you guys know I usually do my recordings Friday and Saturday. I'm doing this one on Monday afternoon after work, which I never do because now I'm trying to play catch up uh, for you guys. <laughs> and you know, I could. I'm taking a week off with this save, so when you see this, it'll be next week, next Monday. Um. But yeah, it took me a couple of days. I, I tried to record Friday, uh, which was the day I got this response back. And I was into the episode and I just went, you know, I'm not having fun right now. Uh, I don't want to be recording this video right now. Um, and so I just turned the game off and uh, shut it down, didn't save it, lost whatever I had done up to that point and didn't care. And I think that in and of itself is a problem. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's, uh, you know, and then Saturday, Saturday and Sunday, I tried to sit down and just heart was not in it. And I ended up being able to do three episodes yesterday on my journeyman, which I'm having a lot more fun to be honest. And so those episodes are going up this week, so I won't miss any in my journeyman. So that's kind of what I alluded to earlier that I'm thinking about pulling the plug on this, say, maybe at the end of the season. I don't know. Uh, we'll see. I mean, if I, start rec if I start recording it regularly again, maybe my heart will get back into it. But, um, you know, maybe at the end of the day, maybe I need to take some of that... Uh, answer that I got that I need to do something different and I'm doing one football manager save and maybe I do something else maybe that's what I need to do uh, 
keep my, you know, because my interests are, are varied. I mean, you, you guys have seen Football Manager. You've seen uh, RimWorld. You've seen uh, Surviving Mars. You've seen Dwarf Fortress. You know, I mean, you know, two, I mean, heck, let me pull up my uh, my Steam account here. I mean, I'm just thinking another brick in the mall we could do. Uh, Banished, I've done a save on. Um, I can actually go in and maybe do a career style save in bullbound college football. That might be interesting. I've never never done that. And what's interesting, and this may need to be more on a separate video. None of my football manager videos are in my highest ranking videos each week, and they're the only videos I'm putting up. All my top viewed videos are older stuff that I've done a year, two, three years ago on other games. So that's, you know, I'm looking at that going, well, maybe, maybe, uh, maybe that's where the interest lies. Maybe that's where I make a bigger contact. But I love Football Manager. I love the videos. I love the camaraderie. I, I love the concept. And, you know, so... But maybe that's what I need to do. You know, maybe I need to do one football manager three days a week and then the other three days do something else. Um, you know, we could do a city skylines, which I like the game. I'm not good at it. Uh, not good at any of these, really. But, uh, you know, the dwarves I don't think would make a good one. Um, Fallout 4 I love, but I, you know, I play that for four, five, six, seven hours at a time. I'd have a month of content, you know, from one day, and that I don't think that would work out. Um, same thing with Kingdoms of Amalur. Keeper RL, that's an interesting game. You guys, you know, seem to like that. It's kind of a niche game, but, you know, that could be one we'd revisit. Uh, what else? Miss Survival, I, I don't think that one's for me. <laughs> um you guys really enjoyed Music Wars Empire till I got the crash. You know, maybe revisit that. Uh, Sim Airport, I just started, and that that got double the views of any of my Football Manager videos in one day. And you know, I'm talking all time. So if that picks up views throughout a week, I may end up with five or six times the views. But again, I'm not after just views. That's that's not the thing. But if that's what people want to see, right? That's the whole thing. Um, Stranded Deep, Subnautica. Subnautica would be interesting because I started playing it and really enjoyed it, but it, because I wasn't sharing it. Starter's Order 7. I, I did a beginning like tutorial thing on that just because I was learning the game. And it's a very hard game to learn. And those are still, a year later, some of my highest ranking videos on a weekly basis right now. Uh, so maybe I need to go back to that. Uh, Surviving Mars, haven't been there in a while. Two Point Hospital, that would be interesting maybe. Uh, Weedcraft was an interesting game. Uh, so, you know, there's some other games out there that I could do. And, you know, I don't know. So... But anyway, that's a different topic. What I really wanted to do is kind of let you guys know what was going on with Football Manager, why this one got delayed. I mean, I you know, it was it was really a, a setback, you know, uh, mentally. Uh, and, you know, on top of everything else that I've been going through, um, I've got more stuff going on. So you guys know, you know, my son had cancer 2017, and he's in remission now, so that's good. Uh, my daughter was uh, quarantined for COVID uh, right before Christmas, came out of uh, quarantine Christmas Eve. So we weren't even sure we were going to celebrate Christmas on Christmas Day until the night before. Um, my wife, well, my mom died a few weeks ago. And so, you know, I'm still coping with that. And then the rock of my life, my wife, uh, who would normally be there to support me, She's got COVID and is in quarantine right now, and I haven't even been able to see her since last Thursday outside of cracking the door and peeking in the in the room she's quarantined in. Uh, but even that, you know, I've got to be very careful because I don't want to get sick. So, you know, so she she's not there to be my support 
with everything I'm going through. And then to have this football manager thing get dropped on me like that, I was like, wow, who does this person think they are? You know, I mean, uh, they're not the be all end all either. Uh, obviously they're good at what they do, but you know, kind of rude and not very supportive and certainly didn't tell me anything to help me get better. You know, it, the advice was quit completely or do something else. So anyway, I'm not going to quit. I'm not going anywhere. Fuck you uh, to that person. And, uh, you know, we'll move on. But uh, anyway, there you go. Guys, if you listen to the ramble, they're having a ramble too. Maybe a rumble. Anyway, if you listen to this, thanks for listening. Um, not looking for pity or anything. Just, just support. And uh, hope to see you guys back on the next video. And I hope you guys catch up on the other series as well. We'll see you next time. Bye.